Hey face makers, welcome back to the factory. I thought I would uh, compile several videos I've been adding up uh, over the past couple of weeks. I've been doing a lot of work for the upcoming Monster Palooza in uh, Pasadena. I'll be doing a makeup, many of you already know this, I'll be doing a makeup at the PPI booth, that's uh, Premier Products. They make all of the uh, silicone adhesives and the tattoo colors, illustrator colors that we all use in the business. But um, you probably know I'm working on a character. I've been posting some, some things on TikTok and on my Facebook page. But I've got some in-depth uh, videos on mold, making the molds. And um, yeah, making the molds. There's a lot of molds I've been making. This is the forehead mold that's completed right here. I'm going to show you how I made that mold. I'm also going to show you how I made my, my big face mold here. And of course, you've seen these probably ugh, talking a little bit about it. Teeth molds. This is just one one part of the teeth mold. Here's the, here's another one. Here is a uh, copy of the teeth, an acrylic copy. It's a model right now. I'm probably not going to use this one. I'll make a new one. Uh, this is Alex, our model. But um, got a lot of good videos to show you guys. So this intro will lead right into several other videos, and uh, I hope you enjoy them. If you are a fan of makeup or follow me or what, what I do, this is the kind of thing I really enjoy doing because it's no one telling me what to do. You know, I don't have a director or producer uh, who's paying me to do this. I do this all on my own accord because I love giving back to those people who are a fan of makeup or want to learn more about makeup or get into the business. So this is for you guys. I want you to all come out and see, see us do this makeup if you can. Uh, again, we're going to be in Pasadena on Friday night. The, I believe it's the 31st and it's the PPI booth. And if you can't make it, look up PPI on Facebook. They'll be running a live stream of the makeup going on. And it's kind of a a fun character. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So go ahead and watch these videos. And uh, probably going to be several, you know, part one, part two, part three. But watch them, enjoy them, and then come see the final uh, finale of this makeup being applied. See you soon. Okay, for these uh, teeth I'm sculpting, they're going to go on the outside of the uh, mouth. And uh, I have this giant teeth mold. Well, to help me out with the sculpting, I need exact mechanical um, alignment with my teeth. So what I did was I took a took Flex Acryl, which is a flexible acrylic, and I made a copy, just the front part of the teeth. That way I'll lay my base in clay and these things flex so they will fit around my, my actor's face the, exactly the way I want. I can clean them up stick them down, and if I want to enhance the teeth, I can sculpt on top of them with clay because it's firm enough to take clay. I can redo the gums a little gnarly. Um, right now I'm doing the lower section, so I put Flex Acryl inside, and as it sets, I'm just taking a little of the liquid, and I'm pushing it up into the gum area, because all I really want is the, the bottom part of the teeth and then part of the gum area to kind of hold everything together. And when they're done, I'll have uh, you know, uppers and lowers that are in perfect alignment, just as like my big plaster model is, and that'll just give me a head start as far as um, proper mechanical alignment on the teeth. So uh, we'll see as we go along. Okay, here's the challenge. I've got this uh, giant teeth I'm sculpting. These are flexible. These are the acrylics, flex acryl. I want them to line up on the face like this. And here's the lowers. They need to line up and look anatomically correct in alignment so when the person opens their mouth, the teeth sync up. I'll sculpt a little more detail onto the teeth, probably lengthen them a little bit. But essentially, this is the anatomically correct version that I want. Challenges is, when I um, remove the teeth, they need to be separate. So what I'm doing is 
I made a vacuum form. It's going to go on here. And I'm going to cut the vacuum form right here so that I can remove the lower piece and then detail up inside the teeth to align on the face separately because I can't get at it when I'm when the two teeth are together. So what I'll do is I'll cut this vacuum form in half, put a little tape to hold it in place, sculpt everything the way I want like this, then I'll remove each vacuum form, you know, take the tape off and remove each vacuum form separately. That way each set of teeth can be molded separately and they'll stay apart so I can get all this detail up inside. Because if I did them as one unit, I'd be kind of stuck. So that was my dilemma and that I think will solve the problem. Okay, here's a few details I want to share with you. I've separated my, uh, my two pieces, put it onto the base. Um, this little area right here, uh, actually this whole thing is going to be removable and you can put it in and out you know in a break during the makeup you don't have to keep this piece in the entire time because it will also have a mouthpiece that fits inside the mouth to anchor it to the teeth so to keep it from being uncomfortable you need to make it removable well when I cast this up as you see when I sculpted it the edges of this kind of fade off and they're kind of off to kind of a sharp almost like a blending edge kind of a thing well I don't want this edge on this piece to be a blending edge I need a, a more substantial area I'm, I'm call it let's just call it a mechanical edge so what I've done is I you can see where it came out to here I, I cut it off with my tool cut away any excess and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little ridge around the edge of it just like this See, I just rolled the little spaghetti piece, stuck it on there. Now I'm just going to take my tool and I'm going to blend it up onto the sculpture like this. And what that's going to do is going to leave a little bit of a rim around the edge of the, the teeth. And then I'll go in and I'll go straight down like a 90 degree cut so it's a hard edge. Now what this allow, it's allow me to do is when I, when I cast this thing up, because I'm going to use a silicone mold, I'm going to cast this in silicone. When I put the two together and press, silicone of course is going to give a little bit. The stone will not, but when it gives a little bit, it's liable to flatten out the mold and create a very thin, paper thin potato chip edge on this. And I don't want that. I know I'm going to have some overflow because I'm going to put you know, a cutting edge on it. And I want that overflow um, to still leave me a nice flat area, which I, I can trim away easily, and then give me a nice, hard, mechanical edge on the edge of the teeth. So when I put them in and out, I can tuck them into the prosthetic, which will be in place here. So I can take the teeth in and out. I'll put the teeth in when I originally put the prosthetic on and start gluing it down. Once the prosthetic is in place, then I can take the teeth out, give my model a break, and do all the blending and painting, and put the teeth in later on in the makeup when I'm ready. So uh, that's my approach. As, so you see this is a nicer, thicker mechanical edge here, where this I've trimmed, and all I do is just take some clay and roll out a piece of spaghetti. Doesn't take much, you know, a little, a little piece, a little dab will do you. So I roll this out. Just roll this thing out. A lot of times I will keep these around um, just in case I need them. I'll use a clay extruder and extrude, extrude a very thin spaghetti piece. And I'll just keep those around for uh, sculpting purposes in case I need them. And they're all exactly the same size. But for this little little area it's not such a big deal 
I can just roll out a little piece like this. I'll start it there. Just give it a little tap, press it into place. See, and I can go right around the edge like that. Cut off where I want it to stop. Just give it a little press down and it's in place. Now I just go along with my tool and finesse it up into here. I don't mind if I leave a little bit of a ditch around it. It'll just help it lock into the prosthetic. So as you see, I'm getting rid of that little roll part of the little spaghetti piece. Okay, great. So now you see, that's all kind of blended in there. Now I'll take my tool and I kind of roll the edge. Don't want a sharp edge, just kind of a, a curved edge on it. There we go. I just go all the way around. And I want that edge to be maybe like a sixteenth of an inch off the surface. There we go. Take my little guitar string rake and I can bring it all together. Now I've got a more of a a hard mechanical edge. Also too, if it's got a sharp point on it and I'm putting it in in someone's mouth, you know, and it's along the edge of their their face here, I don't want to be poking them with a sharp edge on some acrylic teeth. A little note of my tools, this little tool right here, see this little guy? This is perfect for getting in here because of the width of it, it's like an eighth of an inch thick. I can get in here and press and get a, a really good edge on this. The thickness of this, it, gives, it helps me um, reach in the tight spots. Get in there, so you know, these little tools are great. You know, I've got all these different kind of uh, number seven tools. Um, here's a number seven, but it's it's more curved here for if I need to get in and do a little curved, a uh, curved blending or shaping like like right in here because this is more curved and, than flat on the the bottom side. I can I can smooth that contour properly. So getting some really good tools is important. Um, they, these little tools I probably use the most when I'm getting into my detailing. This is just basically a little bass string from the guitar and it's short and stiff so I can get in here and really rake out some of the bumps and, and get an even, an even transition from one par portion of the clay to the other. So, uh, you know, make your own tools too. These are, these are great. Here's another one I did. This is like with a twisted wire. See, and I just soldered it into place and it's great for roughing out things. So that's a little quick, uh, quick catch up on some tools. You'll see this next when it's all cleaned up, ready to go, final details. And I start my, uh, my flashing to do my mold. Mm -hmm.